Okay, well, I decided to do a gaming blog, but I didn't exactly feel like typing. I wanted to do something a little different, so I figured I'd use my voice a little bit. Uh, for those of y'all don't know who, yeah, I'm a nerd. Uh, my best friend, Robert Davis, he's got me hooked into it more than anything. Uh, quite recently, he's got me and Jess hooked on a game called Warhammer 40K. Um, for those who don't know what Warhammer is, Warhammer is an actual tabletop game. Uh, it's it's a you know science fantasy game produced by Games Workshop. Basically, kind of way I think about it is if you've ever seen Starship Troopers, that's kind of like what it is. Uh, the game depicts combat between armies of the fictional universe and the 41st millennium using 28 millimeter scale you know little bitty models. Um, they represent things like soldiers, creatures. Soldiers range from anywhere from like space marines, the Tau Empire, Dark Angels, to the Chaos Space Marines. Then you have creatures which are called Tyranids, or for people who play, they're called Nids. Um, the main lines of these are put out by two companies called Games Workshop and Forge World. Um, there have been rumors for years about them putting out an RPG, which RPG is a role-playing game called Dark Heresy, which they finally put it out, and a lot of people were just ecstatic about it. And matter of fact, just to tell you how bad it was, when the book came to print, they actually made it actually sold out in six minutes. Uh, so you're talking about a book that was put out worldwide. That no matter where you went, if you went online or if you went to a game store, it completely sold out in six minutes. Um, it's just, it's just an awesome book that we found. Uh, we started looking through the book. Well, actually, Robbie did as soon as he got it home, and he just fell in love with it. Uh, for those of y'all don't know, my brother Robbie, he's been a gamer for you know 20 plus years playing Dungeons and Dragons, hardcore D and D player, and he was just completely mystified by this book. Just the amount of detail. The amount of fluff, the backstory that was put into it. I mean, there was just so much stuff that they did with it that it's unreal. And, you know, we've had the book now. Going on a little two months, it's basically been sitting on the shelves. And we finally decided, okay, what we'll do is we'll put together a little, you know, just a little scenario real quick. Try playing it and see what happens. You know, see if we actually like it, if we can figure it out. You know, we really didn't think anything about it, and he wrote up, a, you know, he wrote up the actual story and everything, which those who don't know what an RPG is, RPG is where you get a group of people together, you have one main person called the Game Master. The Game Master actually, you know, writes the story, he controls the NPCs, which are non-playable characters, they can be anything from shop merchants, kings, uh, they're always the bad guys controlled by the game master. Then you have the actual players, which are called PCs. And essentially what you do is you go through with this with an RPG, you pick out one, what race you want to be, and then two, you pick out what class you're going to be. And essentially, you make up your own character. I mean, you do, actually you do everything for it. You make up hair color, eye color, if he's got scars. Uh, I mean, this game even gets so far in depth that there's a rolling chart which ex which you can actually show what kind of ticks your character has. Like, when I rolled against it for mine, mine actually has tribal tattoos all over his body. But you can have it where his ear twitches or his eye twitches or he walks with a gait in his left leg. So, I mean, there's just so much that you can do with an RPG that it's really unreal. And, you know, we got into the book, and when we started reading this book, it really looked complicated because we were we were sitting there trying to compare it to Dungeons & Dragons, and you really can't do that because it is just so much immensely different from the Dungeons & Dragons D20 system, whereas this is a D10 system. So, you know, he sat down, wrote up on a little venture, and we said, okay, let's try it. Let's see what happens. So... This is what took place. Okay, just to give you a little introduction, the character that I'm playing is from the Feral world. He's an assassin. He his name's Havelock. Uh, he's of course male, muscular build. He stands 1.85 meters, weighs roughly about 85 kilograms. Um, he has brown hair, yellow eyes. He's roughly about age 23. 
Um, now, when I say age 23, you got to realize this is in the 41st millennium. So, in the 41st millennium, they age different. Even though he's 23 years old, he's actually about 230 years old. So, uh, that's just a little background information on the character I'm playing. Uh, I'm going to read you a little bit of what the intro that Robbie wrote for the actual adventure that we played. And uh, this is actually how he started it off for our very first time. A vague memory comes to you, a scene when your life changed forever. It was a long time ago, 60 years to be exact. The night air was crisp and cool. You find yourself in the burned out window of the bell tower. Through the infrared scope on your sniper rifle, you saw your target. A body fat man was his name. Well, his name was unimportant. All that mattered was that you had been called. Called by the Inquisition of the Holy Lords of Terror. Called because your skills would now be put to use. This man was found by those who travel the void in black ships to be a conspirator with dark forces. And tonight your faith would be measured. Whatever his deception was, tonight it ended. Two days later, you stood before your new master, Hiram Malstorm, assistant assassin Palatine, a high-ranking member of the retinue to Inquisitor Blaylock. He stands before you, a tar dark cloaked figure with his hood pulled up high on his head. Inscribed on the lining of his cloaks are symbols of the Order Malus. He speaks softly to you. Greetings, young Alkalite. Your test has been fulfilled. You are now and forever will be in the service of the Emperor of Mankind. One day you will be called into service. Until that day arrives, continue with your training. When I come for you, be ready. Those two words seem to haunt your very soul as you stand in the shadows of the mighty spires of Hav Tarsus, one of the greatest hive cities in Scintilla. Steam rises from the grating of the landing pad, and the suns have almost set. A mellow purple-green hue touches the outer rims of the landing pad as thrusters from the Aquila landing craft lower it to the deck. After a few minutes, there is a sharp hiss of compressed air as the ramp to the Aquila descends. Steam seems to roll down the ramp from inside the craft, and it dances in the pinkish, throbbing light from within. Then suddenly the steam is whisked to the sides as a large figure moves down the ramp. He wears a wide brim hat pulled low and an overcoat laced in symbols of the Inquisition. The rest of his garb is a blackish blue leather with many straps and pouches. The man moves swift, swiftly to the shadows where you stand waiting, and in a low voice says, Greetings again, Alkalite. It pleases me that you received my orders to be here. With head bowed, you respond. By the grace of the Emperor, I hope your travels were well, Assassin Palatine Milestorm. He raises a gloved hand and says, Notice, young Alkalite, that I have advanced in rank. Inquisitor Blaylock succumbed to dark forces six months ago, and I am now Inquisitor Milestorm. You were one of the many prospects I've had my eye on over the years, and now as I begin building my own retinue, I call you into the service under me. I hope you have all you need with you, for we leave now. We travel to Barispine, a small emperor hive world in the Adrat Adratus Nebula. I have contacts there that say a cult of the dark gods is corrupting high members of the local government. We are charged with investigating this evil and bringing it to light. He waves you past him up the ramp. Suddenly you feel a sharp prick on the back of your neck and everything goes black.